Selective permeability. This is talking about how cells function. We had learned our makeup of an organism. We did our elemental level or atomic level, then getting into cells and tissues. But before we start talking more about tissues, we're understanding cells and their cell membrane, also known as a plasma membrane, a plasma lemma. We're describing how cells decide what's going to come in and out of it based on its shape and typically its charge, if it's polar or nonpolar. When we look at the outside of the cell versus the inside of the cell, it's a mirror image of each other. And when we describe the cell membrane or plasma membrane or plasma lemma, when we look at these heads, the outer portion of the cell, these heads are hydrophilic. Hydro meaning water, philic meaning they love water or they have a greater affinity or attachment to water. On the opposite side, I see those heads as well. In between are the tails of those heads, and those tails are hydrophobic, meaning they're water-fearing or they don't have an affinity towards water, so things like lipids. So we call this a phospholipid bilayer. So when we refer to this, it's two sides, the head and tails, and then it mirrors itself on the other side. So two layers, that's what we call a bilayer. It's called phospholipid, phospho referring to the phos phosphates of the heads and the lipids within the tail. So a phospholipid bilayer. What this means is it's permeable to small nonpolar or uncharged molecules. And so as it goes through, it can seep through the windiness. And so this picture is trying to show how the membrane almost creates just a wavy action to it as it's within the fluid, the extracellular fluid around the tissues. It is slightly permeable to water, but we just said that it, it likes non-polar uncharged molecules. Water is polar, but it is slightly permeable. And that's where I go back to that somewhat wavy action of the cell membrane, that it's going to allow some water to seep in and out. To me, it's, it's in comparison, if I look at the room of your house or a building, I can close all the windows and the doors, but if I fill with water, it's still going to leak out through the cracks and crevices. That's what a cell membrane does. So if it doesn't allow some of the larger things to come through, how does this work? When we look at the structures through this, we have different protein channels. So these transmembrane proteins, what we call them, they act as channels that allow some of our larger structures to come through. And we call those macromolecules. A lot of times it could be a lock and key mechanism, and it also can use the process of ATP, adenotriphosphate, which is our energy source, that we need this to actively push things back and forth outside and inside the cell. So it's just understanding just the basic concept of selective permeability, that we have trillions of cells, but that cell membrane, based on its structure and function, what it's trying to do to maintain homeostasis within the body is allowing some things to come in and out based on the size and the makeup of it, whether it's charged, uncharged, or the type of molecule that it actually is.